Hey, hi, welcome back to the series of automotive cybersecurity sessions. I am Tote Krishna Hema, your automotive consultant. So in this video, we are going to discuss about what is embedded software, what are the challenges in cybersecurity, and also like what are the types of attacks in cybersecurity, the major ones we are going to discuss. What is an embedded software? An embedded software is nothing but a lighter version of uh, the firmware, OS and application layer of a computer. So it's like it's combined together and it is a simplified version of uh, the software. So embedded software is generally uh, a lightweight software and which comes and pre-installed as a pre-installed uh, software in hardware devices so which serves very similar to the operating system in normal computers and also it supports as an application layer too that means it can communicate with user so small devices like calculators digital thermometers mp3 players uh, comes under this category also to household household devices like washing machine refrigerators mixer grinders or any other uh, the devices like which communicates which does which performs a particular function also every car ECU will have is is an embedded device which will have its own functionality and it's have its own embedded software which is installed in it in this slide you are going to see the difference between computer software and embedded software by looking at computer software from bottom to top the bottom layer is hardware that which includes cpu with motherboard processor ram disk and other components and on top of it like we have a firmware like which flashes ship on motherboard like bios and on top of it like we will have an operating system layer so which has kernel utilities and device drivers and on top of it we have application softwares like ms office uh, adobe uh, uh, pdf reader or any other games or whatever the applications you can see the teams microsoft office means like microsoft uh, outlook and these all things even chrome also so by looking at the right side of this slide like you can see the embedded software so in which the hardware is in the bottom of it so hardware in that like you know my we will have microcontroller ic and other electrical and electronic components which are layered out and which are interconnected in a in a pcb so that is embedded device circuit and on top of it like you know we will have an embedded software which is sufficient to perform the device function and acts as an operating system to it, it works uh, both the functions both both all together so that is a reason which works on with less power consumption and also on uh, which which we which is stored in a flash memory that means it consumes less memory also till now we have discussed about the pros of the embedded software now we are going to discuss about the challenges in embedded software that too with respect to cyber security since embedded devices have small memory we cannot install cyber security applications considering automotive life cycle that is 20 years nearby so it is difficult to update old legacy hardware with the new software patches because old legacy, old legacy hardware does not support the new software as automotive involves people lives that means like there is a life risk life threat for the people who are in the car that means driver and passengers too so when we install software patches through ota on the air then we need to test it thoroughly because you know in other embedded software cases like you know uh, the household devices or uh, uh, this uh, audio video devices or these kind of things like we can easily install it because it does not consumer devices other household consumer devices it is very easy to put it put a software in it when compared to automotive we need to thoroughly test it and then the network connectivity as this is a this is a major challenge always like you know uh, because the car will be moving 
all around right so like in one place the signal will be there one in other place the network will not be available so that time like the network signal network connectivity is an issue and poor access control for remote access in case like you know uh, we are uh, using uh, autonomous uh, level 4 vehicle or so like you know we should have a remote access person so that means like you know that uh, remote vehicle operator need to uh, whenever he needs like he need to get up, get control of it so that's when like we have a challenge also and physical exposure of this embedded device uh, will make the attacker uh, to through go through it thoroughly which allows the attacker to study it uh, completely like in detail so this is also a threat or vulnerability we have uh, because of the embedded software so types of attacks in embedded software so one is active attack active attack is like you know direct attack or something like you know as in when you enter into the system you spoil it something like that they change the behavior of the system and we can easily identify it that means uh, in the previous lesson 2 example resetting the hard head unit by deleting all the files of the user so passive attack is something like they stay in the system for a while get data read data and spy on all the activities of the user and by this they make a lot of personal information vehicle diagnostics uh, credit card information what not like you know whatever he can collect like he can collect from this passive attack so let us discuss the most common attacks which are happening in automotive industry right now so the first thing is data leak or personal information theft so most of the times our sensitive information may be exposed to attack directly or by an another party or to another party that means like you know our devices inside car may be an act as a media to leak our private or you know personal data so personal information which includes uh, the car owner details or you know the driver details gps logs credit card information vehicle diagnostics everything like you know there is a prone, there is a vulnerability vulnerability there there is a chance of threat every time unauthorized access or unauthorized input so when an embedded device requires user input attacker sends an unexpected input that causes an application to crash by consuming too many resources revealing confidential data or allows attacker to execute a malicious command so this also it is not only executing a malicious command so it it is like you know he can install some malware into the system the unexpected input could be a negative value no input at all a path name outside of a restricted directory or special characteristics uh, that change the flow of the program so here is an example in keyless door entry system we have a key fob right so which sends a signal to lock and unlock the car so using a signal jamming device not by Uh, not allowing the driver to lock the car so that's when like you know your vehicle uh, can be theft or by copying a key fob signal is an example of unauthorized access or unauthorized input so next thing is buffer or overflow so threat actor that means a source of attack so attacker is a person but threat actor may be a person or may be a software too so threat actor writes code or even data to a memory buffer and makes it to overflow the buffer limits so once after the buffer overflow happens the attacker continues to write adjacent memory addresses if the application uses the new data or new executable code written by attacker the threat actor may be that means like here the threat actor or the attacker may take control of the system and cause the attack 
restriction of operations within memory buffer limits this is similar to the buffer overflow so here it is the embedded software needs to be coded with in a robust way that it should be it should not access the memory locations out of the memory buffer limits so if it could be able to if we allow the software to to access the outside memory locations a part of the memory buffer limits then uh, the attacker could get a control of our uh, embedded system and he will start attacking randomized authentication or improper authentication authentication demonstrates users pattern of work pattern of accessing data so without proper process in place authentication will be improper so randomized authentication may allow a threat actor or attacker to bypass authentication repeatedly try to guess a password use stolen credentials or change a password with a weak password recovery mechanism so always remember when you sign up into the system always keep a strong password with alpha numeric and also symbols combination also like you know you should keep a password recovery mechanism so strong you should keep uh, like you know security question or you know uh, you should keep uh, otp to your mobile uh, or you know something biometrics or these kind of uh, combo combinations you need to keep and uh, that's when like you know you can prevent the uh, attacker to authorize your data also like um, when when you change it means like you have to change a password more frequent uh, to not to get into the hands of attacker that means like you know the retention period of a soft of a password means like you know you, you can keep this same password up to some days like for for uh, bankings banking passwords like you know these things like i'm gonna discuss in the furthermore videos but how to how to manage the passwords and all i am gonna discuss in in the next videos so uses of mobile bots a mobile bot is nothing but a malware like you know which you can uh, you can observe in mobiles okay in our smartphones if it doesn't have an antivirus uh, antivirus software so once it is uh, downloaded and gets installed uh, by thinking like you know this app will be benefiting our our device like it sometimes it will it will download on its own and it will get installed on its own so that's when like you know it will start watching our activities and you know it will it will spy on our activities this is nothing but mobile bots are nothing but you know which causes a passive attack they steal our data they they recognize our keystrokes also and you know uh, which end up in taking all our personal information and also like you know uh, the credit card information bank information or you know the it, it even uh, gets an access to uh, to the to the uh, to the data which is uh, private data or you know photos or videos or something like that like which is there in our in our uh, device uh, so it gains complete access to the device and its files and starts communicating with and receive inputs from its control servers sometimes like you know it it fetches the data it takes the data and it will it will give and save it in its in its own uh, control servers so the next thing is installation of malware or ransomware so ransomware is a kind of malware malware is something like you know which is unwanted software installed by uh, by an attacker or you know which is which causes um, threat to a device so this is Uh, ransomware is a kind of a malware which is designed to deny a user access to his own files on his own device so by encrypting users files and demanding a ransom payment for the dec decryption key for the decryption key so users must pay money to regain control of their vehicles so with this i came to the end of the topic if you want further more automotive videos subscribe to my channel Also hit on the notification bell to get the alerts.
Thank you so much for your time. We will meet in the next video. Bye.